conflict of interest. This is about you know the true history of the church. Once you get to Constantine, you have a um, conflict of interest. You have a uh, marriage of church and state. Um, now, Constantine didn't make it the official religion of the Roman Empire. He just made it legal to practice. The emperor following him then tried to make it re-legal, and then the one following him finally made it legal and the um, state religion of the Roman Empire. <laughs> but if you look at things... Um, Prior, and prior to this is you have you know multiple of people who are either getting out of the army or renew or renouncing their Roman citizenship to be followers of Jesus Christ and becoming martyred, going to the lion's den, being eaten alive, you know having you know being killed off you know for their beliefs. So the Roman Empire, you know, this was a force to reckon with, where they're having all these people who are checking out of the system, and if you don't have these people in the system, just like any pyramid scheme, you know it falls apart. So they had to get these people back into the system, so they had to make it legal, and they had to make it a, um, the official religion. Otherwise, their system was going to crumble and fall apart because of the popularity and the growing of people believing this, even though you know they're getting killed. Um, so when you have this marriage, you have a huge conflict of interest, and you have the start of the, some of the biggest problems for real Christianity. And why real Christianity has always been underground, has always been off the radar, and always against, you know, every part of the world system. Why? 1 John 2.27, for you can't love the things of this world and love the things of God. It's real clear, you know, Jesus again said <laughs> that the devil is the prince of this world. That, you know, we're supposed, you know, you can't live for this life and live for the eternal life. That we have to be set on, you know, the kingdom of heaven above all else. Um, and then we had lots of people doing this early on, you know, before Constantine, who were willingly to lay down their lives for their belief. But the Roman Empire is dependent upon, you know, having the citizens, being in the army, paying the taxes, um, doing their civic duty. If they're getting outside of it because they're looking for this kingdom of heaven, then the Roman Empire is going to fall apart. And again, they have to get these people from stop getting martyred, from these people stop checking out of their system, or else their system is going to fall apart. Now. In a lot of ways, it surely does fall apart, you know, um, once, you know, uh, the Visigoths and everything come in and attack them. But, it probably would have fell apart even faster if they would not have, you know, bridged, um, made Christianity the official um, religion. Now, the Romans had no problem with having different types of gods, just as so long as, you know, they just add them to their collection of gods. The problem became when, when they were saying, this is the only god, we won't worship the other gods, we're not going to worship Caesar as god. You know, um, Jesus Christ is God, you're not, and you can kill me. That one wound up becoming a problem. And then this is also when you find out, you know, most of the things like uh, Christmas, Easter, are all, pe are all, you know, picked on pagan dates and around pagan rituals. You know, December 25th was most likely not when Jesus was born. And the word Easter comes from, what's it? Ishtar. Ishtar. And that's where you get, you know, the bunny rabbit and the eggs and all these things that have nothing to do about the resurrection. Also, once you get the establishment of the Catholic Church, they picked it so that, um, you know, the resurrection of Jesus should be right after the Passover. Um, or during, you know, right after the Passover is uh, done, you know, on that Sunday he would have resurrected. And you wind up finding out that they picked it in their calendars so those dates will never correlate with each other. But it's always, you know, another Sunday. <laughs> so, you have... Um, now you all of a sudden have all these pagan influences coming into, you know, Christianity. Shortly after, you know, once they have these, you know, councils, they put, you know, the writings into just Latin. Um, and by the time, you know, you get to the Middle Ages, most people don't speak Latin, yet they keep, you know, the Bible and everything in Latin. And the only way you can even hear about this is by going to hear a priest, and you have no idea what he's talking about. And most things that you're going to know about Christianity are from the pagan rituals, which would happen with inside, you know, the Catholic Church. Again, Jesus was real clear. His kingdom was not of this earth. His kingdom was of, you know, when he stood before Pontius Pilate, and Pilate goes, are you king? He goes, yeah, I'm a king, but not of this earth. For if I were, you know, my angels would come right now and defend me, and you know, they wouldn't let me, they wouldn't let you go put me to be crucified. <laughs> um, you know, he's, he talked about, you know, he's a king, a kingdom of heaven. But... If you go from there to all of a sudden, you know, Constantine completely changing over that conversation what Jesus had with Pilate to now know his kingdom was of earth. His kingdom now was the Roman kingdom. And then you get through Charlemagne, you know, the Holy Roman Empire. And all of a sudden you go from a kingdom of heaven to a Constantine, Charlemagne, 
hopes where you definitely have a kingdom on earth. And Jesus was real clear his kingdom was never going to be here on earth, that the prince of this world is the devil and is Lucifer. And that's why you find up all these satanic and Luciferian things in with, you know, the established church and with, you know, like the Catholic church and why, you know, that uh, Christmas would fall on a high pagan holiday or the same thing with uh, Isitar, you know, being for Easter. And I think this was so hard for people to sometimes see is, you know, when they hear Jesus' message versus, you know, their daily lives, or it seems like, well, you know, the Christians already are a majority or have been a majority for a whole while or whatever. No, it never has been. The church, the real church, the real people who believe have always been underground because they're not seeking material things. Since they're not seeking material things, they're not going to really be rivals as far as, you know, the material um, kings of this earth. The material kings of this earth are going to have lots more, lots more of influence, of supplies, um, of uh, persuasion over, you know, the authority of what's being taught, whether it's the authority of the Catholic Church telling people what is real and what's not real, you know, and, you know, with them having their head scientists versus today, you know, having a secular, <laughs> a secular satanic thing telling people, you know, what is going on. Well, it's always been secular, it's always been satanic. It just might move from the Catholic Church, you know, into the secular realm. But anyway, and the real, and the real believers are always going to be underground, are always going to be going, hey, we're not seeking the things of this earth. We're seeking the kingdom of heaven. We're going to trust what Jesus said, that, you know, the devil is the prince of this world. Oh, just look. You find him, find him all these prominent people in the world. Our Satanists, our devil worshippers, like the Freemasons who go to Bohemian Grove <laughs> um, and carry out these rituals. Or like how the UN have all the right material, you know, have the rights of their publishers from Alice Bailey. Or you want to find all these rock stars, and we have the playlist, Satanism in the Culture, where it talks about, you know, they sold their soul for rock and roll. This is all consistent with the things Jesus talked about. And this is why you have, you know, Jesus talked about all these false teachers, all these false prophets. And when I put up videos about false teachers and false prophets, you know, like Rick Warren of Purpose Driven Life, who's now teamed up with Tony Blair for this one faith movement, you know, one world religion, which will eventually go into, you know, worshiping, you know, the Antichrist. Um, and where he turns, you know, spiritual things into just pragmatic, boring, whatever things. But anyway, it's not as yet people focus on this life and how to make this world a better and they're no longer seeking the kingdom of heaven. They're no longer on the same team with Jesus. They're not going to, to, to the same thing with Pilate of, are you a king? Well, here's Rick Warren and they're oh, you know, we're building a kingdom. I, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to do our best here to, to, to make things exist and have a purpose-driven life and a, oh, sorry, purpose-driven church. And, uh, you know, it's okay to have a kingdom here and, and, and trying to do our best here. That's completely stark contrast with Jesus when he says, when he's talking to Pilate, and he goes, look, you got no authority over me. My kingdom's not here. My kingdom is the kingdom of heaven. Um, the devil's the prince of this world. The devil offered me every single you know, key to every single kingdom, and I rejected it because I'm not looking for this. I'm looking for the kingdom of heaven, which comes after this world has been thrown into you know, the lake of fire. Paraphrase. Anyhow, this is the true history of the Christian church. It's always been underground. It will always be seeking the things of the kingdom of heaven. It will not be seeking the things of this earth. If you are involved in seeking the things of this earth, and you're glorifying the prince of this world, and that is Lucifer, and that is the devil, and you're not seeking Jesus Christ, and then he probably will tell you, away from me, I never knew you. Hope this helps. Take care.